only one chin, right? So last week, we talked about using the LG V30 smartphone as a Spotify endpoint and a Rune endpoint, and then using another phone, in my case here, an LG V40, as a remote control for that endpoint. And one of my key prerequisites for doing that video was that the LG V30 gives us a touch screen. So this is a, a streamer, a network streamer, with a touch screen, and that's important. So those of you who came back and said, well, I can do this with my Chromecast audio, or I can do this with a Raspberry Pi. Yes, you can, but it doesn't have a touch screen. Well, the Raspberry Pi does have a touch screen option, but I don't think it's quite as nice as this touch screen. Anyway, that video was, I was actually very surprised by how many people responded to it in the comments section, very favorably, but also it threw up a lot of questions and in some cases, some issues that I would like to tackle today. The first issue is that some of you, I believe, are experiencing some odd pops and clicks from Rune running on the V30 and then outputting from its three and a half minute output here. Now, I've not experienced that myself, but you should know that my LG V30 is some international version, and for some reason, it's not updatable to Android 8.0, I think this is stuck on Android 7. So that may be a reason why. There is a thread on the Rune community forums about the pops and clicks issues. So if, if you have that, I don't really know what to say to you to help you fix that. And it's probably cold comfort when I tell you that with the V40, those issues for me don't present at all. Spotify, everything's perfect with both these phones. So also in last week's video, we used this V30 to play some Sister Mercy MQA from Tidal. And you might recall that I was a bit confused as to why there was some bit depth conversion going from 24 to 16. And we can also see that on the V40 here because obviously this is a remote control for that. And I think that's because for everything but the native Tidal app, the output of this headphone socket is restricted to a maximum of 16-bit 48 kilohertz. We can go to the Tidal app, we can pull up this same album in MQA, it will say masters in the Tidal app, and we have to trust that that is playing higher than 1648 out of the headphone socket. But generally, for all other apps, Rune included, for Spotify it's not an issue, but for Rune, when we're playing high res it is, this is capped at 1648. So here we have the System Mercy playing in MQA, on the Tidal app on the V30 phone. Now the thing is, is in the context of it being a network streamer, we can't so easily remote control the Tidal app with this. There's no kind of like direct connection between the Tidal app on here and on here. So we'd have to find a more generic remote control app for this phone to remote control this phone, which is kind of, it's not a very elegant solution. Those apps do exist. You can Google for them, just Google for like Android remote control app they'll come up. But that limitation also applies to other apps. So when people ask about, well, what about Amazon HD? Now, I don't yet run Amazon HD. I could pull up the Amazon app here, but again, we have that remote control limitation. We need to use a more generic remote control app for that. But then if we're in the Amazon app and we're playing 2496 out of that, or even 2448, we still hit the 1648 limitation of this because it's not playing from the Tidal app. So we need to think about maybe bringing in an external DAC. So you can see that I've added an AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt to this situation connected via USB using a dragon tail to the phone. The smart observers of you will notice this is the LG V40, not the 30. The 30 battery died, just had to put it on charge. Not all Android phones push ones and zeros out of the USB socket here. Many of them do, but not all of them. And the V40 does that. Anyway, so I've got Sister Mercy playing again. It's coming out through the Cobalt DAC here. But you'll notice this light is blue, and I'm playing MQA, and it should be MQA purple, and it's not. 
that blue indicates 48 kilohertz. Rune doesn't tell us what sample rate is coming out of here, but the dragonfly does. So we're getting 1648 again. So it seems that, again, outside of the Tidal app, we are capped at 1648. So if we want to get more than 1648 out of an Android device like this, or if we want to avoid its resampling, upsampling nonsense outside of the Tidal app, we have to pull up another app, and this is called <coughs> Audio Player Pro. And it's not just an app, it's also a USB driver. So this app has taken over control of the USB port on this phone, and you can see I'm running an MQA file here. This is Underworld's Drift series. It's very good. Um, and this is a 2496 file. And you can also see from the Cobalt, we have got MQA Purple in play. So no resampling, no upsampling. This is proper MQA, proper high res from a smartphone into the Cobalt DAC, which does the decoding, and then out of this cable and into my Hegel amplifier and out of my Klipsch speakers. Whew, that's quite a convoluted process really, isn't it, anyway? But this, this app is great. It's really cool. There is a fee with it. I think, is it 10 bucks, 15 bucks? I'm not sure. But anyway, because I've owned this for years, like absolutely years, so I've forgotten how much I paid for it. But a lot of people use this. It's a great way to ensure that you don't have any of the Android nonsense getting in the way of you getting your MQA or your high res or whatever you want. And I guess I should add, because people are asking me this, is like, well, how does the Cobalt, how does its analog output compare with that of the phone, which is on this V40, it's down here. Yep, the Cobalt sounds better than the phone. It's a bit more spacious, it's a bit area, it's a bit more easeful. If you want something a bit more energetic, though, I would recommend going back to the Dragonfly Red. Very different flavors, um, but, as this is a phone, and if you want to get really nerdy about electrical noise, the Cobalt is the only Dragonfly to have some of the jitterbug technology built in. But really, that's, I would say the discussion about electrical noise, even though it's a high-end audio concern generally, I don't want that to detract from the message of just having a nice simple setup like this. Of course, there is a limitation to this setup, again, we can't remote control this app unless we go and get another remote control app, a generic remote control app for our Android phone. So I could go and get my V30 from the kitchen again, put a remote control app on that, an Android one, and just control this, but it's not very elegant. So for those of you who are confused a little bit as to what's going on here, USB Audio Player Pro is the app that I'm running, but it also supports Tidal, which is how I could play Underworld. And now I'm playing the System Mercy again. So it's the same Tidal stream of the same System Mercy Greatest Hits album. And it's MQA. We've got MQA Purple Light on the Dragonfly. So we have everything in situ here apart from remote controllability. So let's recap so far. I wanted to get an LG phone as a network streamer with a touchscreen firing directly into my Hegel amplifier down here. And the problem is we can go to the Tidal app, but we can't really remote control into that as easily as we can with Rune. Same with the USB Audio Player Pro. It does a brilliant job of integrating Tidal and Cobas and playing high res. Um, but for that, we need an external DAC. We don't have to use an LG phone then, we can use any Android phone with a USB output. But there are so many like swings and roundabouts, so many different possibilities, if this, what about this, let's try that. I gotta say, normally I'm a fan of Android for many things, especially for Bluetooth. But for this kind of setup, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, especially if we wanna do high res and we wanna do high res properly. 
and especially if you want to do MQA properly. So. I've taken the Android phone away. I've connected the Dragonfly Cobalt to an old iPad. This iPad's like five years old. I can't remember what model it is. And I'm using the Apple Lightning adapter. So I've got another touchscreen streaming setup here, but this time using the Cobalt. Remember the Cobalt sells for the same amount, 300 bucks, as an LG V30. Although I think you can get the V30 a bit less. Some people have said, or you can get it for 180 or 175. But anyway, instead of spending your money on an LG phone, you could buy a Dragonfly Cobalt like this, hook it into an old iPad. Now, the reason I like the Cobalt solution is that its LED here tells us what is going on with the sample rate coming out of the iPad's lightning port here. So here I'm using Spotify, I'm playing Future Sound of London, Papua New Guinea translations, which is great. And it tells me that coming out of the iPad is 44.1 kilohertz because it's green. We need to keep an eye on that light because it tells us what's coming out of the iPad. Now, if I cut over to Rune, and let's say I play, this is David Bowie's Five Years box set. This is the Tidal version. This is an ordinarily available, um, if you play it through a, an MQA DAC, you'll get 24192. So it'll be the first unfold to 96, second unfold to 192. If I click play here, and then click this, see, look, 192, 24 bit. Now you can tell here that all we're getting is 2496 from Rune. It's doing the first unfold. And here is the 96 kilohertz light on the cobalt. So when we get that kind of light blue, we know that 96 kilohertz is coming out. So that means we're not getting the full MQA experience because the light's not MQA purple on the cobalt. It's this kind of frosty blue, which means we're getting 96. So we're getting half of the MQA experience. Man, this high res business is really complicated, isn't it? I'm listening to myself going, Oh, it's this 2496, this 192, and blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry if this is too, <laughs> has become very technical. It wasn't my original plan. My original plan was just to talk about the iPad today. But because of the fallout of what happened with the LG phone, I thought I should address those issues first. Anyway, here we are on the iPad 2496. Now, I'm very confident. I know that the, the Rune app here is just doing the first unfold because if we go come out of this... So we close Bowie and we go to my library here and go to overview. I saved this, this is an MQA version of the latest Richie Horton live album. Click play now, get our info light. And this is getting the first unfold from 44.1 to 88.2. And we know that's true because Dragonfly gives us its yellow light, which means 88.2. So we're getting the first unfold from the Rune remote app on the iPad here. At least it's not capped at 1648. I think this is a, a very elegant solution because we can then go back on to the phone that I've just freed and I can use, if I pick the right zone, if I go to my iPad, now I can remote control this Richie Horton album. So this Flaming Lips album is stored on my hard drive on my Rune server and it's 2496. That's what Rune tells me, tells me just here. And I'm playing it and the Dragonfly Cobalt also gives me its 96 kilohertz light. So again, it works for normal high res. So if we go into the focus settings here of Rune, go all the way across, go to format, we'll take off 96, we'll engage 88.2 
and now I have all the 88.2 albums in my library. Not many. Let's click on Depeche Mode Music for the Masses, Play Now, and you can see Cobalt Yellow 88.2 confirmation. As Olaf just said, this is a real wormhole that many people can dive down. So firstly, in our wormhole, confusing for the newcomer to MQA High Res is that there are two versions of this David Bowie box set. See the MQA logo here? Now I know this one is the 24192, this one is the 2496 version. So click on that. If I click play, as we've done before, and we get our MQA light here on the Dragonfly. Now, so far, we've not seen that light on the iPad. So if I disconnect it. So this is the same 24192 MQA version of the Bowie Five Years box set as viewed through Rune. Click play. And you can see, as before, we have the 96 kilohertz light on the Cobalt. You might be asking yourself, why isn't it the MQA purple light that we had over on our Android device. That's because we need to tell Rune that our Dragonfly, see, it says no MQA support here. We need to tell it that it can do MQA. And it can actually do decoding and rendering. So that means unfolding and some DAC wizardry. Click Save. Now we click play again. Now watch the light change, MQA purple. And if we click the signal path, you can see that it says MQA Studio 192 kilohertz. So this is the complete MQA experience with the Cobalt. And I think all up, this wormhole is very confusing for newcomers. But let's not lose sight of the bigger picture here. I have deployed an old iPad to use it as a network streamer with a touch screen. The touch screen is important. I've connected the Dragonfly Cobalt to it. So that's my whole setup here. And then I can remote control it from the couch using my phone. And like last week's video, I can also do that with Spotify. Let's not forget about Spotify. For me, it's very important. There's stuff on Spotify that I don't find anywhere else. So between Rune and Spotify, they're the two key streaming things that I use in my life. Um, I have them covered on this rig. So for me, this is probably a slightly more reliable setup than with the LG phone. And by more reliable, I mean we don't have to kind of go, well, what about this app? And am I getting clicks and pops? Or should I use a USB DAC? Um, Tidal Masters, blah. All of those things. I mean, you can do those if you want. And if you've got a good handle on those, more power to you. But really, when I was starting doing these videos last week, I wanted these to be more beginner accessible. This one has not become that. So I'm hoping if you've actually got all the way to the end here, you will see actually that this is quite a simple setup. Uh, yeah, I think we should stop there. I was gonna say, if you like this video, please like it down below. I don't know whether it's any good. Um, if you think it's okay, please give it a like, please. Um, <laughs> if you like my attitude towards, well, it's not really towards anything, my attitude. I'm not a big high res user. I'm really not. I'm very happy with Redbook and CD quality. Um, I love this as a setup. We've been running this for the last hour or so, hour and a bit filming. When I started filming, the battery life on this iPad was at 91%. This has been plugged in the entire time, and now it's at 89%. So please don't for a moment think that this DAC is going to drain your battery within half an hour, or even an hour, or even two hours. It's not. You can run this for many hours of listening, and then use any phone to remote control it. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling again. Um, if you like this kind of thing, if you think that this is something you could do with your gear, so with your tablet or phone, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.